Welcome to Script Monster YouTube channel. This is the second lesson on how to create a rich text editor using JavaScript and HTML. Okay, so this is where we left off last time. You see, when if I try to click, I cannot type it here. Okay, so we want to achieve this kind of a thing whereby I can underline things, I can make them bold, and change the font size as I wish can change it as I wish okay so we are going to go back to where we left off coding and continue from there okay so in this lesson it's mostly going to be JavaScript we did the bulk about HTML and CSS now we want to do JavaScript so I'm going to collapse that CSS I don't need it anymore and the body is still there but or we can just see the word. So I'm going to add script tag, okay? And this is where we're going to code all our JavaScript. Now, as usual, you have to know where to place your JavaScript. In this case, we want this JavaScript to run. The window has finished loading. So how do you ensure that we're going to add an event listener to the window, the event of load? So like this, event listener load. Then we're going to pass in the anonymous function. And the use capture is going to be false. So that's how we want to run our code. So all the code we are going to write to add this functionality will indeed be written in here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get an object reference of this iframe into a variable. Okay. So we're going to type where editor equals to the WYSIWYG dot document. Now there are two things involved here. Okay. Why did I use the WYSIWYG? Remember, I gave it both an id and a name in this case i'm using the name so it's very important for the name to be there okay second thing you may ask why do i type in dot document because this iframe is actually a frame and a frame has its own document you see so that's why i'm using the WYSIWYG the name of the iframe and the document so that's how i'm going to refer it after that i'm going to make it go to the design mode okay what i mean is i want it to be editable you can type in so that line of code will do it so editor dot design mode equals to on so when you save this document go back to the browser refresh you can see now you can type in data but now the button still can't work okay and that's where we're going to write now so you see how i said that i'm referring to the iframe with its name directly i'm also going to do the same to all the buttons i'm going to use their ids okay for the iframe use the name for the other elements you can use the id okay so i'm going to add an event listener to this button with the id of bold button like this the event of click okay so when it's clicked i want this function to run The use capture is going to be false. When the button is clicked, I want it to bold the selected text in the iframe. Now, how do I do that? Well, the iframe, when it's in design mode, you can employ a method called exec command. Okay, this is a method that can take one argument or two arguments or three. For example, if I type in bold and save and we go back to the browser and refresh and I type in my name there. You see, makes it bold. It's that easy. The second argument it can take is false, and the third one is null. Now, this null can be a passed in value. In the case of when we want to change the color, the font, and the links, we're going to move to them one by one. So, we're done with the bolding. So, we go to the next button, which is the italic button. So, we're going to add an event listener. In fact, I'm going to copy this and add it here. Italic button, add event listener, click, I change this argument to italic. Let's see whether it works. Fresh the document, type in my name. It works. Bold button works. Okay. So we have targeted the italic button. Then we target the superscript button. Okay. So the same way, I'm going to copy this because it's the same structure and change this to superscript button. Add event listener, click. I want it to be super script. So we go back to the browser and test. We refresh. Say x squared. Let's see whether it works. It works. The next one, we're going to target this subscript button. So we copy that because the structure is the same. 
editor.exec command so i'm just going to change this to subscript let's see whether it works you say sulfuric acid for those who forgot chemistry does not work why does it not work this is coding we have errors all over let's go back to the code oh i see you see that's why i made a mistake should have been sub button subscript let's see now you see it's working now we want to go to the strike through so we're targeting this button same thing we're going to copy over so strike button add event listener we're going to change this to strike through like that hoping that's the correct spelling you see it's struck through you don't believe you don't believe you don't believe it's struck through the next one we're going to target the insert the ordered list button so we're going to copy the same format adding an event listener of click to the button and we're going to need to copy that one ordered list button so here we're going to type insert ordered list okay now this is an ordered list is going to be given an id so what i do is i give it an id now you pass it as that argument but you don't want all of them to have the same id so i use math dot random to get a unique number as the id also i want it to be round i want it to be a whole number so i make it to be a whole number and i want it to be between 0 and 1000 so I multiply by 1000 okay so that's how so it's going to be new ol or new ordered list plus some random number so it's going to have a random id the next one in the list so let's check whether it works insert ordered list save the document I'm there typing I insert ordered list Okay. The next thing we are going to insert an ordered list. So we copy the same idea and paste it. And we want to change that ID that we're adding like that. Then here we say we insert an ordered list. Insert an ordered list. Okay. So let's check whether it's working. click it's working okay no new so the next thing we want to work on is how to change the color you see I can change the color I can even change this color back to something else or something new okay so we want to work on that and that happens in these two input elements okay this one change changes the, the font color this one changes the font highlight color okay now we're going to add an event listener to this okay to that input element with this id so we come back to our code area we say font color button dot add event listener now this event listener is going to be different from the others which were click this one we want it to be changed okay when someone changes the value 
of the color what do we want to happen we want to change the color so here we're going to pass in an argument of event okay and we write our code as usual now it's going to take the same method so the first argument is going to be power color because that's what we are changing second argument is going to be false now the third argument is usually a color but in this case we don't want to predetermine the color we want the user to have selected so how we are going to get it you see we have passed in this event we're going to say the event dot target meaning the element that caused this event to run which is this element we get its value so that's how we're going to get that color so let's save we go back refresh and see let's see whether it changes the color it has to you see it's changing the color that one applies for the highlight button too okay the one that changes the background color so if i want this to have some background color you see it also applies for that so what we do we're going to copy this because it's the same idea but we're going to change this to be the highlight button okay so when you save that go back to the browser refresh we say julius loves js we're not sure let's see whether it works uh, let's give it a yellow cool not working so why let's go back and check we said for color instead of back color okay so we say back color and we pass in that value we go back let me copy this text first so that I don't want to type again change the background and it worked okay so by now i hope you've gotten the gist of it so now we're going to this font changer okay so we're going to add an event listener to that now remember it's also an input field a select option and we're going to check on change then pass in our function this function is also going to need the event to be passed in so what we're going to do here we're going to say editor dot exec command we pass in three arguments first the first one is font name the second one is false the third one is what font we want to change now we want to get the value of that select thing and pass it in as an argument so how we get it type in event dot target dot value okay so font name false go back to the browser still retain that text we paste it we want to change this font to cursive consolas you see it's changing so we go to change the font size so for the font size still similar to this so we're going to add an event listener to the font size changer which is which is this input select option that we used javascript to create we add an event listener to that 
the event of change. Then the first argument is a font size. Use the print pattern false. Then the value of that element. Okay. So let's save. Go back to the browser. Refresh. Let's see whether it's working. It's working. It's working. The next thing we're working on is how to create these links. Okay. When you look at the example, I want this to be a link. Click, type in a link, and boom, it's a link. So let's see how that happens. Go back to the code. So we are going to add an event listener to this link button okay the event of click we're going to pass in our anonymous function there and the use capture is going to be false now for this to work it needs you to pass in an argument which is a value in the form of a link so the first string is going to be create link the second link the second argument I mean is going to be false but the third one has to be the value of a certain URL so how are you going to get it in this case we're going to use prompt okay so I'm going to say URL is equal to prompt so I'm going to prompt the user to give me a new URL. So the first argument I'm going to pass in is enter a URL. That is what the user is going to be to see as a message. The second one, I might as well begin the URL for the user. Okay. Then I'm going to pass what the user is going to give in here as a third argument like that. Okay. So let's see whether it's working. See? It's working. Now, for these three last buttons, it's as easy as the first one. So I'm just going to give you the code there. So I'm going to add the event listener to those three buttons here the link button will remove link when you have previously assigned links the undo button will undo the redo button will redo and the, the strings you pass in is a link undo and redo so let's go to the finished product and see whether it's working so I want to create a link. Prompt me to enter a link. It's now a link, but I don't want that link. Now I can unlink it. Okay. But I want it again so I can undo. I don't want it, I can redo. Okay. So you see they are all working. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to submit this form to the database. Okay? To a MySQL database safely. Okay?